a recording by Joanne Hedges and Brianni Prora, Prora uh, from the Indigenous Oral Health Unit at the University of Adelaide. Joanne is a Yamachi woman and Senior Aboriginal Research Officer at the University of Adelaide. She's a highly regarded Senior Indigenous Research Worker uh, on an Indigenous Early Childhood Carey Study and uh, HPV Infections and uh, Oropharyngeal Cancer Study amongst the Indigenous uh, Australian adults. Um, Brianna is a PhD candidate with the Indigenous Oral Health Unit. Her research relates to the impact of neoliberal political and economic ideologies on Indigenous oral health. It would be very interesting. <laughs> and uh, early childhood caries amongst Indigenous children in South Australia. Uh, Brianna and, and Joanne uh, will be joining us live after their presentation to respond to any questions. So, kick off the presentation. Will do. Oh. Let's, uh, yeah. Not this one. Sorry, everyone, we're just experiencing some technical difficulties. I'm going to try that again. Yvonne, do you want me to try sharing my screen? Brianna, can I operate it? Yeah, we'll just give it. We just realized we haven't checked a button and we'll reshare. Physical yeah. and emotional connection with their land. It's not been without its hiccups. However, I consider my input to grant proposals, working in the field, and providing comments to reporting the results of our research as significant, particularly working in the field. The connections made with Aboriginal organisations, the community, and research participants impacts how well we recruit and retain participants and the support we get from organisations. Research in the new era is important to us. The yarns are hugely important with communities. Enabling communities to yarn with field researchers on questions they may have, their understanding of their involvement in the research, and exercising their ethical rights turns our research into a highly profitable power-based partnership and relationship. So this project followed the yarning process published by Bessarab and Agandu in 2010, which includes social yarning, collaborative yarning, therapeutic yarning, and research topic yarning. Both social and therapeutic yarning facilitated the relationship between Joe and I over the past year and a half. 
collaborative yarning and reflection in the field, as well as the, about the potential for this project, led to an eventual research topic yarn. The research topic yarn was audio recorded and transcribed verbatim, and the transcript was combined with various field notes and meeting notes to produce the results section of our paper. So the title of our paper is Walking Together, Relational Yarning as a Mechanism to Ensure Meaningful and Ethical Indigenous Oral Health Research in Australia. But what do we mean by relational yarning? We use this term throughout to distinguish it from the research methodology of yarning, and we discuss relational yearning as a mechanism alongside research projects that enables us to prioritize our core values for meaningful and ethical Indigenous health research. So this is the results of our um, project. Our yarn resulted in the identification of six core values incorporated into our research process. Respect, relationships, advocacy, reciprocity, time, and gratitude. We presented a yarn between Joe and I for each of these core values in our paper, and we have included an example for each on our slide. With regards to respect, we discussed how respecting and acknowledging cultural ways and community business is important to building trust and relationships. Relationships not only are, we're not. were discussed as not only important with individual community members, but also with organizations and community. A key point throughout our yarn was the dynamic and evolving nature of relationships and the importance of being flexible and doing what community members identify as best. Advocacy was discussed as a critical part of doing Indigenous health research, particularly in the face of racism and in terms of advocating for participant health, but as well as in the institutions where we work. Reciprocity was discussed as a responsibility that we have with communities. Sharing knowledge from our projects with individuals and organizations is very important, not only findings, but also information that strengthens community understanding of the rationale for each project. Establishing and maintaining relationships, sharing knowledge, advocating for participants, and acts of reciprocity are time-consuming pursuits that we often navigate within time constraints. Finally, gratitude was discussed as an essential mindset to have when working in partnership with participants and organizations and recognizing their significant and often voluntary contributions to research. So the goal of our paper was to reflect on our experiences and explore the possibilities that relational yearning alongside various research methods holds for prioritizing respect, relationships, advocacy, reciprocity, time, and gratitude. Our work is unique in that reflecting on our experiences has enabled us to articulate the strengths and possibilities that relational yarning holds as a tool for adhering to core values when conducting Indigenous health research. Impacts of colonization and exclusionary research practices have silenced the stories of many Indigenous peoples in Australia, and arguably some contemporary research processes continue to silence Indigenous voices. The creation of space for meaningful and ethical Indigenous research is the responsibility of both non-Indigenous researchers and Indigenous researchers. Failing to intervene as privileged non-Indigenous researchers permits the continuation of racism and symbolic violence in academic institutions. As Indigenous health researchers, we continually impact the lives of Indigenous peoples we encounter. Relational yarning as an ongoing practice enables deeper understandings and respect for Indigenous cultures and peoples that is necessary for meaningful and ethical research conduct, but more importantly for relationships. The Australian Human Rights Commission's definition of self-determination by Indigenous Australians as being an ongoing process of choice to ensure Indigenous communities are able to meet their social, cultural and economic needs. In our experience, yarning is a tool that improves Indigenous health research at an individual and community level. The research industry, funding bodies, individuals, research teams, academics, research institutes and journal organisations need to use their position of power to acknowledge, commit and influence positively to challenge the Western norms and embrace Indigenous ways of being acceptance research can be done in an alternative method. 
providing the same outcomes, just in a more culturally secure way. Reciprocal, Westerners learn from being part of the Indigenous research circle. The learning is so much more than the research. It is the responsibility of everyone involved in or associated with research to contribute to the future of improved health of all Indigenous Australians. Brianna and I would like to end by expressing our deepest gratitude to our Aboriginal communities, organisations and participants who have generously supported our research projects. If you have any questions about our work, please feel free to email us. Thank you. Oh, we're unmuted. Yeah, thanks, Joanne and uh, Brianna. So do we have any questions or comments that we've got? Um, comment, terrific method for facilitating stronger communication and relationships with researchers. And thanks for this informative presentation. As part of the presentation, you, you said that um, you know, more and more governments and, and other policy makers need to accept that yarning is, a, is an important strategy to get information. Um, did you go the next step to think about how, um, you know, how that might be done? How do we get people to change their mindset about the value of yarning? Um, so Joe is in the field, so she's not able to join us. I thought she might be, but I will try and answer on behalf of both of us. So um, this project was kind of born out of us going into the field and the practices that I've been um, privileged enough to learn from Joe about how we conduct ourselves in the field and what might seem like common sense to us in the way that we do things might not be common sense for other people. So we kind of wanted to take an opportunity to jot that down and um, kind of talk out a bit more what we do and why we do it and that sort of thing. So I think that this is our first step in that journey. There's definitely a lot more work to do. And even with the way that we wrote the paper um, using not traditional um, headings, like I think we did, instead of methods and materials, we put the process and we had to, the journal we picked, we had to engage with the editor and be like, we really don't wanna use the traditional headings. Will you accept this and have a conversation about that? So even I think, trying to challenge things in a small way kind of starts the ball rolling, but there's definitely a lot more work to do, yeah. Yeah, 